Okay, I know this looks a little bit sketchy, but let me just walk you through what I've got here. This is a test chamber for diving, an underwater test chamber for dive equipment. And what's really cool about it is that I can actually program not just a given depth in here, but I can actually program an entire dive profile. So I can have it recreate a whole dive if I want to, which is awesome for the Apple Watch Ultra. Of course, obviously I'd like to go diving, but I live in Amsterdam and the only thing you're really diving for here is like bikes in the canals and the canals are only just a couple meters deep. Now, there is this crazy indoor dive facility about two and a half hours from here. I've used them before, but their website is horrific and I can't figure out if they're actually open before I drive that far. And so for now, we're just gonna have fun with this. So what do we got here? Well, basically this is the chamber that all the water sits in, obviously. It's got this crazy heavy lid that I put on there. It even has an arm for pushing buttons and stuff like that, though it doesn't work that well on the Apple Watch because of the way the buttons are designed, but that's fine. Uh, over here, we've got a compressor that moves the air into the chamber and helps compress it. I've got this crazy ass like control box here along with this and all this stuff then interacts with the computer over here. This is a tablet from, I don't know, like 2010. It's a Dell tablet. It doesn't really hold a charge that well. So I charge it and I plug it in and hope for the best. So then we got the Apple Watch Ultra itself. And this has basically two different levels of dive or depth uh, certification or design goals. Now the hardware itself is certified to 100 meters depth, meaning that you can use this hardware down to 100 meters, press the buttons and all that fun stuff down to 100 meters. No problems at all. It's got a whole dive certification here on the screen. Fine, that's pretty much a norm for almost every uh, watch out there. Some are 50 meters, some are 100 meters. More than enough for diving. I know there's like this weird dive lore in the dive community that you must have a 300 meter watch to dive. That's garbage, it's been garbage for a decade. There's no science or data to support that. Uh, the way these things are certified today is well beyond the way things were certified even a couple decades ago or a decade ago. So 100 meters is fine here for diving, especially recreational diving, which is what Apple's goal is with the depth app that's on the watch itself. So every Apple Watch Ultra has a depth app on it by default. And that app is certified or designed, if you will, to go to 40 meters. Uh, and so that's the design goals of that app. And we're gonna go beyond that just to show you what happens when you do that. Then finally, there is the Oceanic Plus app. Uh, that's a third party app that Apple's worked with. And that app has all the features that you'd expect of a dive computer from Sunto or Garma or whatever the case is, uh, and the syncing of the data afterwards into their platform. The Apple Depth app barely does, and I'm gonna show you what it does have in it. So with that, let's get this thing started. I've got the Depth app already opened up, and you'll watch as I put it in here, it's gonna notice I'm going down to about one feet. There we go, boom. That's one feet of water depth. Uh, and the reason that's important is because if I just put it in there without starting the depth app, it will not automatically like leave the screen on. Uh, normally it will turn on the depth app automatically, but the screen, because it's not, not wearing it, you get the point. I gotta have it on there automatically. So then over here, I've got a dive gauge, just kind of like a, a validation, if you will. And then you'll see the numbers on the screen as well as that. And you can kind of just validate them across them. This gauge has not been like calibrated yearly or anything like that, but as you'll see, it won't really matter too much. Okay. Then we're gonna take this and seal it on up. So I'm gonna put this in there. Try not to bonk the watch. Okay, we got a good seal all the way around at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and attach the piping. So this basically goes ahead and the compressor cable going in, or the compressor air going in. Uh, now we're gonna detach the power from the tablet. Uh, this is like when you have an old iPhone that the battery doesn't hold anymore. Uh, the same thing. There we go. Uh, this tablet hasn't been connected for years to the internet. It's still thinking it's 2015. I don't dare change it. I just leave it alone. Uh, so you just heard it. There we go. Turn on this. You can hear the whir of it starting up. I'm going to load up my test here. And then I've double checked this is locked. These are all set. Now we will go ahead and hit go. Okay, so you can hear it kicking in right now. Basically it does two different steps. So you can see this whole step ladder on the screen right there. Uh, the first step here is at 10 meters. Uh, and so I know it's meters over there and feet over here, but you can see 36 feet. Uh, and you can see here as well, just a little bit above that, about 39 or so feet. The point of this isn't necessarily to test the exact calibration of the sensors. Each time we go down, you'll see a little bubble there, if you will, on the Apple Watch display, indicating we're going down. You can see the depth shown in meters on this side, as well as shown in feet on this side over there. It also shows our maximum depth that we've reached right there at 83 feet, uh, because, you know, it kind of wobbles a little bit as we go down. So right now we're at 35 meters. We're gonna go one more stop to 40 meters and this will be the next pre-programmed stop. And then we're gonna go ahead and take over it and bring it down beyond the specified depth. So you see right there, 
it's holding 40 meters, or what it thinks 39 meters or so. Right here we see on this uh, 126 or so, maybe 125 feet. Over here, 123 feet, very, very close. You'll also notice the water, the time of our depth, and the time of day at the very top. Now, if you're finding this video interesting, useful, entertaining, or something, just whack that like button at the bottom. It really does help with this video and the channel quite a bit. Now, in just a second, it's gonna release some of the pressure and it's gonna bring the dive watch shallower. It's part of the pre-programmed dive profile I have here for testing watches, uh, but we'll go ahead and we'll override that in just a second and then go ahead and make it much deeper. So there you go, you just heard it go out. And then you can see the watch itself decreasing in depth. Our next step here is 20 meters. Now, of course, this app isn't all that advanced. So I'm gonna purge it and basically bring us down to the shallows and then go up again. So now basically ending this particular dive. Watch here, we'll release all the pressure out, going up very, very quickly. You can see some of the air bubbles going up that were caught inside the band. Uh, and then now watch, it'll go ahead and automatically end the dive and it'll show us the dive summary in just a second. There we go. So now we see our maximum depth in this dive summary underwater time, water temperature, the time is shown there. Uh, and then it tells you in the one screen below that that you can't quite see uh, to check your phone in the Apple Health app to see more data. Uh, and hang on, we'll do that in just a second. So now we're gonna go into manual mode right there and we'll put a depth in. And we're gonna go straight for 50 meters. Remember though, the hardware here is designed for 100 meters. It's merely the depth app itself that is not pleased with going beyond 40 meters. And the reason is that from a recreational dive standpoint, 40 meters is sort of the limit there of where you would have for an advanced open water certificate. And that's sort of the goal of this watch. And then boom, right there, beyond 130 feet. Uh, so at this point, we are beyond what Apple wants for their depth app. And it gets really important to understand, this is difference between hardware and software. Their software app, their basic, super, super basic app called Depth, is limited to 130 feet. Beyond that, they're like, not our problem. But I don't wanna dive too deep, too deep. Versus the hardware is capable of 100 meters, which is roughly 300 some odd feet. Very, very different sort of things. Now, watch as I go ahead and purge all this out. Here we go. I'm gonna purge everything out right there and bring us back down. So as soon as we go below the 130, it shows us our, uh, our depth again, no problem. So it never showed us the actual depth beyond 130 feet. It basically says, please don't go there and uh, get on back to, to normalcy. And you'll watch here, our maximum depth will just simply now show that it was beyond that to overall there. So maximum depth beyond 130 feet. And now at this point, I can go ahead and turn things off. There we go. And I can get my battery charged up again over here. Every little second counts. I've only probably got about 15 or 20 minutes on this tablet worth of battery. It's again, a decade old. Uh, and then finally, I can release the rest of the air. So purge manually there, purge out this, and then I can go ahead and get the Apple Watch out of here. So give me a second to do that. Grab our little watch. Okay, and now you see, I can still use the digital crown here to move between things. Um, but if I wanna to touch anything, of course, I've gotta unlock it. My hands are wet too, so unlock it. You can see it just shot, actually see it shooting the water out. Look at that, right there. That's crazy. It's really hard to see it. There we go. And I'll go down and you can see right there, you can review and manage your depth history in the health app on your phone. So the way we do that right now, I got a screen recording somewhere up here, is you crack open the health app, the activity tab. And then from there, you'll see, come on, once it redoes this, there we go. Underwater depth uh, beyond 144 feet. Uh, there we go, we tap that. You can see by day, but we'll go down to hour. And there's basically two dives I did. One I did prior to shooting here to make sure the machine didn't blow up. And then two, the second little dive we did right there. If I look at the show all data, you can actually see the data in there. In fact, if you look at these samples, I'll just crack one open right there. For example, this one uh, shows underwater depth 78 feet. But if you go down to view all quantities, you can see there's other depths in there. Uh, and these are separated by, you know, anywhere from a few seconds or so to more time than that. Uh, so there is more data in there uh, that third parties could perhaps go ahead and pull off if they want. And that's probably what the Oceanic Plus app is doing behind the scenes. And what Apple's general nature is, is to stick this stuff in there. Uh, anyways, as Apple said, this is designed for recreational diving. They're super clear on their website uh, that you should have a secondary dive computer with you. Uh, the goal of this though, is that if you're going on vacation, doing a dive, a casual dive, you can have this, record that data, have some record of that there. Now, as for that Oceanic Plus app, the terminology Apple's using is coming this fall. 
don't know their definition of fall. I'm guessing probably like October, November tends to be their fall definition, but we shall see. Technically, North America goes to December 22nd, so we'll see. Uh, 21st, whatever. In any case, I'll review that once that happens. That's all I got. Uh, some of you are probably asking, why would I have bought this in the begin with? Uh, and so I had this built, again, like I said earlier, about a decade ago. Uh, and the reason was, at the time, most GPS multi-sport watches, most triathlon watches made by Garmin and others, weren't actually waterproof. I know that sounds crazy in today's context, but if you bought a Garmin multi-sport watch in 2010, 2011, they weren't waterproof to more than one meter, so more than three feet, and that was it. So then they started eventually creating more watches that were waterproof, like barely more than that. And I wanted to see like, were they actually legit waterproof? And so I contacted the company uh, to go ahead and have this whole thing made. It cost a lot of money, by the way. It cost even more money to ship it from uh, Canada, where it was made to Europe. And then from there, I was starting to test watches. And in fact, you can probably find a couple older videos. I'll, maybe I'll link one above here if you're really bored. Hello, I'm Ray from DCRainmaker.com. What if I hear today is the Apple Watch? I'm gonna put it in this waterproofing chamber and see how well it holds up. But what I found out was that it was super boring. I thought that watches would do something really exciting when they failed, um, but they never failed. And the cool part with the button pressing and all is I could validate that I could press buttons on water and things like that. Uh, but at the end of the day, I never had a single watch fail. I even bought like a whole bunch of crappy Walmart watches and stuff like that to have fail and none of them did. Largely because even back then, crappy Walmart watches were waterproof to 50 meters or so. So it was really tough to, to actually cause these to fail. This whole setup is rated for 50 meters. Uh, so again, 150 or so odd feet. Uh, and I'm not going to go beyond that. That would be like a stupid safety thing to do. Uh, it's designed for that. And obviously, there's a mechanical reason why when you talk about depth and things like that, stuff is designed for it. So uh, that's that's the story of this. Uh, it is pretty cool. Now, eventually, this thing will probably all die. Not this part of it. That might too, but probably this part here. Uh, the tablet is the one lifeline to this entire thing. I spent two hours this morning trying to get it to turn on and then eventually giving up on turning on and trying to get my other laptop, my other Windows laptop, to run the old app from, again, a decade plus ago. Lots of compatibility issues, lots of failures. I spent a long time trying to troubleshoot it. And some of you may know I used to work at Microsoft for more than a decade, so I kind of understand that pretty well. And not looking super good. So hopefully this thing just keeps on ticking a little bit there uh, because that's uh, the only way I can kind of do this sort of fun test like this. Anyways, hopefully you found this fun or entertaining or something like that. Uh, I, of course, will, as I said before, do some sort of legit dive testing with this once that Oceanic app comes out. But until then, it's kind of just too basic to really do much with today. Uh, as always, if you found this video interesting or useful, whack that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe down at the bottom. Uh, that's, that's all I got. Uh, there's lots more coming. I felt like can, I mean, there's tons more coming. Actually, a crap ton more coming. So uh, don't miss out on that. Have a good one.